Alright guys, so this week we're doing something I've been promising my son that I do for quite a while now. Um, this is a 79 Dots of 510 wagon, A10 if you really want to be particular <laughs> about it. Um, this was my car. I sold it to my son three years ago, two years ago, I don't about know, two a, years while, now. a while ago. About two years. He's gone a different way with it. He's put these wide tires and spacers, everything else on it. And now we can't turn, and you can't get your fingers in there. So he ordered these sheet metal flares um, from Taiwan, Taiwan or somewhere. They're actually handmade. They're pretty nice. So I'm gonna go through today how to install fender flares on your car. Now these are gonna be a little different than the rubber ones that just stick on. These are different. So and the biggest issue is either from a '71 not or '79. He bought them for the wrong car. So we're gonna make them work. So, because this car they don't make anything for. Me. So there's gonna be a lot of modifying to make these fit properly. And at a quick look, we are cutting a lot of fender away. So we'll start off by mocking it up, drawing some lines, and see where we're sitting. All right. First thing you gotta do is mock them up on the car. So it's not as easy as most flares would be because I have no wheel well to follow because these are a different shape. So what I'm doing is just going to square them up the best I can and then we'll anchor them in place. Now once I'm happy with the placement of the fender, I'll go ahead and start attaching it with self-tappers. Now I'm not going to take and place the self-tappers in the final holes on the bottom because we have a body line we have to work with. Now these fenders aren't going to wrap all the way under so I have to kind of space them. Now I'm going to use the fender itself to follow the shape on the inside this is giving me the exact amount of metal I need to leave uh, when I'm cutting. Then I'll actually take and extend the lines all the way to the bottom so I can tell where I need to cut and fold to change the wheel well. Then I'll actually jack up the car, use a cutoff wheel to follow the cut lines. I use a flapper wheel to smooth all the edges. There's no sharp edges so if it ever bottoms out it won't cut the tire. The lower part's going to be exposed and the fender flare is not going to cover it. So I'm going to take and cut relief cuts in it because it is a compound curve here. And I'm going to have to bend it in pieces to fold over the fender so it's not just a jagged piece of metal there. I'll start bending them with a pair of needle nose and once I've got them close enough I'll come back and finish them off with a fender hammer and a dolly. Yes, I do see the tag on my hat now, and it has been removed since then. Now behind the wheel, I'm doing the same thing. Relief cuts, starting the fold with a pair of needle nose, and finishing it off with a hammer and dolly. Once I'm happy with it, I'll take the flap wheel just to make sure there are no sharp points or pinched points. Once we're good, we're going to go ahead and reattach the fender. Now at this point I can see where the gaps are with my body line and tell that the clearances are good. So now I have two choices. That's either sand and cut the fender to fit the body line or simply hammer out the body line to the edge of the fender so the area under the fender is flat. So that's what I decided to do. Hammered it out. Kept the body line everywhere it's exposed, but under the fender, I just flattened it out. Now, instead of using self-tappers just to hold this forever, I've decided to rivet them on. Gives it a much cleaner look, and I don't have to worry about the self-tappers backing out. Now, on to the other side, and we do the exact same process. Now on this side is much better. You can see all the cuts I'm making, everything, and you can see what's going on behind the wheel. Now as you can see, I went ahead and flattened out the body line before putting the fender on. Now we'll go back and remove one screw at a time and replace with a rivet. That way everything stays in the correct position. Check our clearances and drop it down. Now, the rears. The rears are a whole another beast, okay, because this is a four-door and the wheel carries into the door well. 
So I'm simply going to line it up the best I can to deal with the door and deal with the excess behind. Same process, anchor it where I want it with self tappers, trace it, and then draw my line of where I'm going to cut. Now, the front of the fender was actually really close and I did not want to cut any more metal away uh, to lose strength. So what I did is I'm just cutting from behind the fender, same way we did on the other, and just cutting away the excess metal for clearance. Once again, there's body line I needed to remove under it so it was set flat. Lower it down, check our clearances. We're good. All right, last side. Now this really gives you a good view of how poorly these fenders were rolled before. The previous owner before me did this and they literally took channel locks and bent the fender out and then kind of gooped Bondo in it. So we're fixing that now and covering that up. Okay, from this angle you can see what I meant about these fender flares weren't made for this car, but we're making them work. The wheel well does not match the flare at all, so I'm recreating the wheel well to match the flare so they look proper. Well guys, I have to say the install did not go too bad. I mean, it, it looks way better than those butchered wheel wells that were on it. Um, everything clears, the kit can turn complete U-turns with no rubbing, so mission accomplished, and he's happy with the look. So, alright guys, I'll catch you next week.